Today let's talk about the dry sump oiling system. Welcome back everybody, Joe with Forged. This is our seventh update in the video documentary series for the dry car. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the dry sump oiling system. We put this system on the car about two years ago and what the biggest reason was we were having oil control issues under heavy acceleration in half mile racing. You know, we would see on the data logs the oil pressure would come up strong. You know, even on a single dyno pull, we'd make excellent oil pressure. We'd have the deep sump oil pans and do all that, but with the uh, lateral acceleration of the car, we would start to see the oil pressure slowly decline as we went through the next gear, the next gear, the next gear. And we just didn't like what we were seeing. And I was chewing up some bearings and uh, some engines back then. You now we've since figured out ways and the community's figured out ways to make the factory oiling system work better in those conditions. But at the time we decided, you know what, this is a race car, let's put a dry sump system on it and just be done with it. And with this system, we get basically 100 PSI or better oil pressure throughout the entire pool. Basically from the word go, we're making 90 to 110 pounds of oil pressure and it holds steady through every single gear. And this is why. All right, guys, I'm going to take you on a little tour of what this sea of oil lines does, where it goes, and how the system works. So if you'll see here on the bottom, it's got a Peterson R4 external scavenge pump that has three stages of scavenge and one stage of pumping. So what you see there on the front three is where it's sucking oil out of the Magnus pan. Inside of the Magnus pan, I didn't get a picture of this, there is a tube that runs off of that little front addition that you can see there that goes to the back of the oil pan. So that solves one of the issues that we were having back when we decided to go with this system was a lot of the oil was being forced to the back of the motor and not being able to drain back to the front sump and then get picked up by the wet sump system. This system gets rid of that issue. The other line that takes around the back side and then loops around to the front is also what is scavenging the rest of the oil pan. And then on the front most line there, that goes around and loops back up through the cradle to this Y adapter and it's scavenging directly off the turbo oil drains. We chose to do it that way because uh, GTRs, usually if you're gonna have a smoking issue, it's gonna result from poor drain back on the turbo. And that's one of the reasons why the factory has a factory scavenge section on the internal wet sump system to drain oil from the turbos. All right guys, we've moved around to the side now. You can see the three scavenge sections basically suck all the oil out of the pan and oil mist and all the stuff that we don't want inside the engine. Pumps it through to this dash 16 line that you can barely see through there. And it comes back around and follows the front of the car. Around to the top of the Peterson oil tank. Now inside that tank, that's designed to basically de-aerate the oil. There's a bunch of swirling action that goes around in there and de-aerates the oil. There's a breather system on the top to get some of the foamy, slushy, oily froth out of the oiling system. And then the pump then sucks it back out of the bottom of the tank and back around to this rear section on the pump and then out the pump, top of the pump that you can see there around to the oil cooler the canister oil filter and then comes back again 
and into the side of the engine. Now you're probably thinking, that's a lot of lines to make all this work. That's really just a packaging issue. Now I know that the, uh, we come around here, that the oil tank is not ideal for a drag racing scenario because it's kind of the short and wide tank. You really want it to be tall and narrow because the, the more, the higher the oil is from the bottom of the pickup, essentially, the less chance you have of picking up aerated oil in the system. But this is uh, the best we could do with the current setup and the front mounted turbo. Uh, we might revisit doing a slightly smaller tank. You know, the one nice thing about this tank is, according to Magnus Motorsports, it's going to take about 25 seconds for the system to pump all of the oil out of this tank and then into the motor. So if we got quite a bit of oil reserve there in case we had some type of an issue where you know, oil wasn't getting back into the tank properly from the engine. We still can supply the engine for more than enough time during a drag pass. Something else we're going to probably end up doing is uh, getting rid of the oil cooler. You know, the oil cooler, one of the things that we're having issues with now that this is a dedicated drag car, is getting the oil up to temperature quick enough. You know, a lot of times I'm having to idle the car for 10 to 15 minutes just to get all the fluids up to temperature. And now that we're just running a methanol car, we don't need to be idling the car. It drinks fuel like crazy, just sitting there idling, just getting things up to temp. So we're probably gonna go with a different solution here without the oil cooler and go with a Wix style racing filter that's remote mounted basically in this same place. All right, the last thing I wanted to show you guys was the breather system for the car. It's, you know, it is part of the oiling system. We don't pull vacuum off the valve covers or anything and go to a catch can. Uh, what we do is run a dash 20 breather off the back of the engine, and it comes around. To the back and this follows around. Now, this is something we're going to change. This is from when we ran a full exhaust system. We kind of had to route this thing through to the back. And it's not, you know, the prettiest thing, but it gets the job done. So that runs a breather system all the way to the back to an oil tank in the back that we're able to drain through that pepcock there. Now this is one of the things we mentioned on a previous video that we're going to end up changing and move that to the trunk and better route the way this breather routes around everything in the back. All right guys, that wraps up the tour of the dry sump oiling system. Thought it was worth making a quick video on because I get so many questions about the dry sump system and what is that tank on the front? Why are all those lines routed to this place and that place? And I spend a lot of time explaining to people how the system works and what it's intended to do so hopefully that gave you a little bit of an insight as to why we put it on the car you know, ultimately it came down to the oiling system bearing life all that was the last thing we wanted to have to worry about when developing our engine program so we put it on the drag car and we haven't looked back since so until the next video we'll see you next time